What is happening, everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. I'm not gonna make a dumb joke about not being on camera this week. I voiced this video series over. You can check out the last two videos on the 32 and 40 for bad jokes about me being away in Michigan. And if you've already seen them, you'd know that they're about these three Atlas Orion anamorphic primes. And this week, we're gonna conclude this lens overview series by checking out the 65 millimeter Atlas Orion for Canon E F mount. And if you haven't seen them, here's how this is going to go down. I'm going to do a brief physical overview of this lens, talk about its build, its optics, and its coverage for a little bit. And then we're going to check out a basic lens test I set up in the studio to get an idea of the characteristic of this lens. And I'm pumped because these are the real deal. These Atlas lenses are wonderfully designed with amazing optical quality and really give you that quintessential anamorphic look. And these have been around for a while. They're just so dang popular. They're always on rentals and I can literally never get a set of even three together, let alone every single one. Though I gotta say, out of these three at least, this 65 millimeter is my favorite, and I always save the best for last. So life is short, and you should really spend your time wisely by watching videos like these and subscribing to the channel so you can continue to waste away, I mean, further enrich your life by learning about video gear. So as for this 65 millimeter, basic like white paper specs, it's five pounds exactly and seven inches long exactly, so that's oddly satisfying. And out of these three, it's actually the middle size and weight where the 40 millimeter is actually going to be slightly longer and slightly heavier. Although most of the focal lengths in the Orion line float around this size and weight until the much longer and heavier 80 and 100 millimeters. Every lens in the set conforms to the standard 114 millimeter front barrel diameter, which is the size of this little lip down here at the front of the lens. Though the actual size of that main part of the barrel you can see is just like slightly wider. A big feature about this lens set and the sign of a real lens set, if you ask me, these are all directly swappable. When you swap out a focal length for another, the iris and focus gears will always align in the same spot. You won't have to readjust accessories that are attached to the gears, like fizz motors or whatever, which can be a big time suck. Every Orion lens has a T2 to T16 diaphragm that's constructed of 14 aperture blades, and the 40 and 65 millimeters appear to be actually really far back here towards the rear element. Additionally, each of these lenses is the full 2x anamorphic stretch factor and have an illumination circle of 31 millimeters. And as for coverage, on Alice's website, they list that it covers the Airy Alexa sensor in the 4x3 anamorphic mode and covers the Red Monstro 8K sensor in its 6x5 anamorphic mode. Although I did these lens tests on the Red Komodo's 6K anamorphic mode, which does use slightly less of that that area, but not by much. Before we get to this test though, I wanted to take note of a few design and build choices of this 65, which is gonna be pretty much true of every lens in this set. From the camera out, the build of this lens starts with a beefy metallic lens mount there, which is interchangeable with PL mount as well. And then it's immediately the aperture ring, this little area with like a top facing focal length and Orion series decal, and then a little step up to the focus gear. After that, there's a larger step up in diameter which brings us to like the main part of the barrel and that's going to give us those lens markings in feet. They also make these lenses in metric versions as well. And you'll see those distance markings wrap pretty much three quarters the way around this lens barrel. And on the other side, the right side of the lens, it has the same markings but facing right side up that gets sort of hidden between this little cutout window built into the barrel here. After that, it's just straight shot lens barrel until the end with those top facing logo and like lens info decal on the side. It's got that thin little orange ring at the end. That's just before that tiny little step down I mentioned for that 114 millimeter barrel diameter. These Atlas Orions are not front anamorphics. There are spherical elements at the front and those cylindrical elements that give us that anamorphic stretch are just a little bit built into sort of the middle of the lens barrel a bit. And if you look close, you can see that just those elements have that royal blue lens coating for that quintessential blue anamorphic flare. Just a few last design notes here as you've seen by now they stuck with like an orange and white colorway for this set with the focal length and large atlas lens co in white here with some markings on the barrel in like this deep blood orange color and then everything else that's orange is in like this like traffic cone orange which clash but it doesn't have to look pretty it has to make things look pretty so let's take a look at the 65 millimeter in this quick characteristic test I set up so here I have Kyle in the stunner shades looking like an absolute rock star he's gonna be at 
six feet from the sensor plane in this test and the background here is at about 16 and a quarter feet and i have an object in the foreground at this lens's close focus of two and three quarters feet near the background is a little felix light with a full ctb gel on it although the flare from this lens will be blue anyways I just thought I'd give it a little bit of help there. So as I rack focus back and forth here, keep an eye on the lens breathing. Out of these three lenses, it is the most pronounced here in the 65 millimeter, but not out of control. I gather that this is a really hard thing to avoid on anamorphic glass. I'm also going to do a large pan across to see how his face gets distorted as it gets towards the edge of the frame, which is basically non-existent here at 65 millimeters. I'm going to do that same pan at close focus, and this is going to be a good time to check out the bokehs and out of focus area in the frame, as well as that lens flare from the Felix light. All right, here's all the same exact stuff, but now we are down to T4, where the last test was at a wide open T2. And at T4, you should notice things appear considerably sharper, especially at close focus. But also, you'll surely notice how the bokehs are going to get a lot smaller here at T4, and a lot more likely to find like a circular shape rather than be like pointy and cat eye. -y. Conversely, the lens flare is going to get a lot more intense at T4, and like more in focus too, if that term still applies to a lens flare. And we'll check out the difference between wide open and off wide open more directly in just a sec. Finally, I popped in front of the camera here to see how it treats actual skin tones. No offense, Kyle. And I'd also like to see what it looks like when you obstruct the lens flare like this.
Speaking of that lens flare though, here I'm just moving that Felix light around in the background so we can isolate that lens flare. And for sure the main difference between T2 and T4 there is that extra blooming you get when you're wide open. Though you're a lot less likely to get that full oval flare like we saw in the 32 and 40 millimeters, interestingly enough. It's more likely to happen by the edges of the frame than the center for some reason, which was the opposite case in the last two. And finally here, I'm just gonna do like a toggle between T2 and T2.8 for a sec to see how that characteristic changes when you go in and out of wide open. And next here, I just finally went through the whole aperture range of this lens. All right, y'all, that is pretty much gonna do it on this physical overview and quick lens test of the 65 millimeter Orion Atlas 2X Anamorphic Prime. And that's also gonna wrap up this little mini lens test series of these three Orion lenses. Let me know what you liked and didn't like from any of these videos. Also, if you have any questions about these lenses or the recording modes I shot on, you know what to do. You've been on YouTube before. Speaking of that, you can also get familiar with that little thumbs up button down there or the thumbs down one. I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you thumbs up it, that's going to help this video get more people seeing it. If you haven't subscribed already, we're super close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And if you are, you can go the extra step and hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. That's going to keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. And you will be seeing my pretty face in the next video, which is all the more reason to subscribe. See you later, everybody. Take care. Thank you